All right, so small uh, continuation on the rack itself here. Uh, before I paint it, um, I welded in the, the brackets for the actual pump. So all it is is angle iron. And as you can see, I started it from way back here. And it just is welded right under this uh, cross section all the way through. So all that's left to do to that actual piece is to slot it for the pump. Right here, so I'll drill holes about right here and right here, and then I'll slot them. So here's what I did for the, the solenoid rack. And again, all it is is the angle iron. It's just it's backwards. And then that's where the solenoids are gonna sit. Just like that. Same to the other side. As you can see, it's just welded, uh, it's just the angle iron welded back to this base over here. There go, right there. So this will be real close to the motor. The motor's gonna be about right here. So it'll have a short little wire right there. Boom. So here's the, here's the other side. You can see I put a, a weld here, and then a weld here, here. And then I think two on the other side. Yeah, it's got two more. Right there. So that was all that was left. Next, we got um, these, uh, I'm gonna weld in these nuts right here. So these are our 916 nuts. And what I had to do is shave a little corner off of here. And then the same on the other side, shave that little corner and then uh, I hit it in there with the hammer. So I just need to weld that in now. Let me see, where's the other one? Hey, quick tip, whenever you're welding in the nuts to the, to the upright, go ahead and put on the bolt. That way you won't get no slag inside of the, inside of the nut, because then you, you gotta dig that stuff out. So just put on, it don't have to be tight either, but just, uh, and then you don't have to weld a whole lot on it. It's just some four little open corners that you need to weld in. Then you just grind them down, but, Put the bolt in, that way you don't get no slag on the inside of the nut. All right, so that sucker's in there nice and snug. Uh, you don't want to hit it with nothing too heavy because then you're going to mess up the thread on the inside. And then, you know, you're going to be out of luck. So just tap it in with something light. I use the end of the channel lock, so. Just uh, make sure you shave enough here. Don't shave too much or else you're going to have to hold it and then weld it. But like that, it's it's really snug. And then you just weld it in and mold it in with the, with the flap disc. So let me... So here's the first mock-up with the batteries and one of the pumps. Uh, today is Monday, March 17th. And um, the rest of the setup is scheduled to be here in two days on Thursday. So I bought all my, um, I bought the pumps from uh, Hoppos Hydraulics. Uh, I appreciate their stuff. You can tell, you can tell the quality and, and the time that was put into the Hoppo stuff. Shout out to Hoppos, uh, their, their shipping is on point. They ship really fast, you know, there's nothing missing. They send you tracking numbers right away. So big, big shout out to everybody, the team over there at Hoppos. Um, so here's the back pump, that's just mocked up. And uh, here is the Parker slowdown. All this stuff is gonna be hard lined. That's what I mocked up here. I love Parker, man. Parker, Parker slowdowns are Awesome, Parker check valves, beautiful. Yeah. So the only thing missing from that pump that I would say that that's gonna make it complete is, is a couple of ADEX dumps. But they're a little bit out of my means right now. I just had enough to buy the front piston and the ADEX for the front. So those will come later down the line. So here's the fitment on the, uh, on the rack. And man, this thing is nice. So the nuts that fit in the one by one were, uh, again, they were 9 16th. Uh, 916 bolts and boom, I got some chrome bolts. Everything is nice and sturdy. I had originally cut this hole down to 70 inches, and um, once I put the batteries in here, I couldn't get that thing in here safely at all. So I had to cut it down to 63 and a quarter. 63 and a quarter is what I cut this to, and now I can put it in safely without bumping the terminals or almost bumping the terminals or hitting the inside of my quarter panels. So now I, I have to just slide it back in 
put it down and then slide it to the holes. And it does, it grabs about three quarters of that last battery. So that thing ain't going nowhere. And here's the other one. So I cut this to uh, 63 and a quarter. It was, it was too long at 70 inches. 70 was right edge to edge on the batteries. And that would have held down a little better, but I mean, this, this holds down just as good. It's not gonna go anywhere. And you can get this thing in and out safely without almost bumping the terminals. Cause I did that once when I was a kid, back in high school, I had a 65 Impala, uh, just a simple red super pump setup. And um, man, I grounded, what did I ground? Man, I, I just hit the positive and negative. I think I burned my slowdown. And man, I burned the mess out of my hand that time. And so that's one way to learn something. So ever since then, I've been super careful with terminals and grounds and powers because this is a whole lot of voltage and I guarantee you it'll, it'll burn some stuff up. So you always gotta be super, super, duper, duper careful with, with all these batteries. But anyways, here's the wreck. I'm really happy with the fitment. Man, I'm, I'm really excited. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint all these batteries. I gotta take all these stickers off. And um, the plan here is to paint them red. I'm gonna paint the batteries red and I'm gonna paint the, uh, the battery rack, that gray that's on my blinds. Move this out the way here. So you see the blinds, they have a nice gray. They are the exact same color of my headliner and also they are similar to the gray on the dash, on the Dakota dash, so. So red batteries, gloss red batteries, gray rack, and as you can see, the blinds run in parallel. So that bar will run parallel with it and it'll just have that little bit of hint of gray that'll go and coordinate with the rest of the car. So that's gonna be, I'm gonna paint the rack next, paint the batteries, um, install the pumps, plumb the pumps, run the wiring, and uh, my buddy Lone Star is, is gonna do the hard lines on this thing. So he's, he's really good at hard lining. And um, I already have all the ends, the sleeves. I already have the hard line. So I'm gonna do some real simple hard line from the pump to uh, probably right, right about the shelf there. Um, I ordered uh, some bulkheads also from Hoppos. So it's gonna be a nice simple short line from here probably to the hinge. And then from the pump, I don't know how much room I'm gonna have left from the coffin block to the actual hinge, but the plan right now is to run hard line from there to there on the bulkhead. And then uh, hoses behind the false wall. So I'm gonna do a false wall here. Uh, possibly do a speaker box in the future. Uh, I'm not too convinced about that. I'm not too crazy about bass or music. Just as long as I can hear everything on the inside, I'm, I'm good. So, so there it is. Um, we'll keep you updated on the on everything else, and um, we'll bring you back when this is looking a little bit more complete. All right. So the battery rack is painted now, and um, it's the exact same paint I used on my blinds, and the blinds are the exact same color of the headliner. So all this is gonna is gonna match. Um, next, I need to paint the batteries uh, red. So I'm gonna paint them the same gloss red as the car. So here's the rack. Uh, I took quite a bit to get it to this stage. Um, you know, since everything was in the car, minus the hold down, I had to cover everything up real good. Plastic sheeting. Uh, I used uh, some moving blankets just to cover everything. And, and it was uh, quite a bit of, quite a bit of work. Um, for those of you guys that have bought this still before, you know that it has like some sort of film on it and it leaves your hands really black. So I had to, I had to wash that down really, really good. So I had to take that off. I had to. Let me see. So I had to degrease it first. I had to degrease it and then uh, I sanded the whole rack with um, 180 grit. And then I had to go back with soap and water again, wash out the whole thing. And then uh, wax and grease remove, wax and grease remover on the whole thing. Make sure it was really clean before I did any kind of paint. And then I brushed on epoxy. So I, I brushed on the same epoxy that, that I use on everything else. It's um. The SPI epoxy. This one actually looks lighter in the picture. I mean, in the video, but it's, it's the same color. I guess it's just a 
the uh, the fluorescent lighting down here. Anyways, it's the SPI epoxy. You can brush it on, so I brushed on everything really well. And then I went back and I, uh, I rattle canned the gray. So it turned out really nice. Everything's nice and smooth, nice and clean. And uh, like I said, next up, I'm gonna paint the batteries probably tomorrow. Today is Thursday the 19th. So probably Friday, tomorrow Friday, uh, March 20th. We're gonna go ahead and uh, paint the batteries. So I have some epoxy left over that was mixed and I don't wanna throw it away. Uh, I need to take off the stickers like I just did on that one, prep the batteries and then get them painted. So I'll probably be painting that tomorrow, hopefully if everything turns out okay. So there it is, there's another update on the rack. So I'll bring y'all back when we get some paint on the batteries. Just got a few more goodies from uh, the good the good fellas at Hoppos. I got my hoses, my coffee block, the hinge, um, bulkhead brackets. Man, I, I, these things are really nice. These are really nice. The uh, bulkhead nuts, uh, front piston pump. Man, I really like these. So these are gonna mount oh, right here. Somewhere about right there, yeah. One on each side, and I'm gonna hard line the pump to right there and then run holes from there to the back. These things are really nice. So yeah, we're moving along. Here's my hard line on the floor right there, stainless hard line. Uh, half inch, everything is half inch on the whole car. Let's see, I got my half inch fittings there in the front. Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to the guys at Hoppos. They shipped all this out really fast. I'm super anxious to open up this piston. There's a backing plate for it. Oh yeah. Golly, look at that sucker. Oh wee man. Excited. Sheesh. Bolts, rods. Man, these are some heavy duties. There's a motor in here. And the puck. And then, all right. Well, shout out to the guys at Hoppos again. Thank you for the stickers. Definitely gonna mount those somewhere. I'm gonna get a new toolbox here pretty soon because this one's fairly tatted already. Yeah, we're moving along with the setup. I mounted the solenoids, painted the rack today. So I started cleaning up my batteries, took off all the stickers. I'm gonna be painting those probably tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Friday, March 20th. So more than likely that's gonna be happening tomorrow. So we can go ahead and get these mounted. I got the cable, I got the lugs that I need to cut and make. So I still got quite a bit to work, quite a bit, to, quite a bit of work to do on the, on the set up here, but man, most of the stuff is here and I'm excited. So I'm gonna keep you updated. All right, all right. All right, so here's where we're at with the back pump. Uh, we started the hard lines. We got all four lines bent so far. Everything is half inch stainless. Uh, stainless ends and um, everything is just mocked up right now as far as the lines go we still need to flare the ends but what you're looking at here is a hot post pump uh, obviously center pressure side returns and um, I went with the uh, everything uh, Parker everything is half inch Parker checks and uh, Parker slowdown and this has a number nine gear in it and this is going to the rear so the full setup is gonna be hard lined. And um, this is where we're at with the back pump. And man, this Parker slowdown is super nice. I love it. So I'm gonna change the end cap to match the front piston one. It has a six bar uh, chrome one. That's the only thing I'm gonna change for now. And then later down the line, we're gonna add some, some ADEX to this. 
But uh, today, this is where we're at on the horn line. So right now we're fixing to flare this and then tighten everything down. And this should be a wrap for this. You got anything you want to add to this, Lone Star? No. Nothing? Uh, Come on, man. It's actually pretty simple. Yeah. A lot of people think it's really complicated. A lot of people think it costs a whole lot of money. Yeah. But it, it really doesn't. I mean, so the tubing is like, I mean, some people will sell the tubing for $15 a foot, which is, uh, a should, be, it should be illegal. Uh, yeah. a should, be, it should be illegal. Uh, a should be, it should be illegal. Yeah. But I mean, you can get this stuff for like between two and $3 a foot. Yeah. And I think overall on this right here, we probably used um, so both of these were 15, we probably used about four inch. feet, right? maybe five yeah. feet. Yeah, about five. This feet. is about five feet. We we did over measure some pieces right here, as you yeah, can see. Yeah, we got a few extras. So about mm -hmm. five feet at at, at three dollars a foot is fifteen bucks, yeah. and that's cheaper than hoses. Oh, if you really think about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but then you factor in the uh, tube nuts and flares, mm -hmm. or uh, tube nuts and sleeves. I'm sorry, and then um, the the tools to do it. You know, this is half inch 049 wall mm -hmm. you can't you, your home depot and your lowe's uh flare tools they're not going to flare that you're right. a little they're not going to do that you either need uh i like to use my imperial 400f or some sort of hydraulic flare tool because your rigids or whatever you buy at home depot is not going to flare half inch 049 stainless steel uh seamless yeah so the tools do cost some money, but it's an investment. Whereas you can do stuff like this, and uh, I mean, you, know, you, can, you, can, you can you can if you get tired of it in a year, take it apart. You can put your slow down down here. You can put your slow down up here. You can do whatever you want. Sure. You can you can redo the setup, you know, for next to nothing. So I dig it. Um, all that's left is to flare these ends and plumb it up and call it done deal so yeah. i think this took what maybe an uh, hour or two i would say about two hours two hours two hours total by the time everything is flared and, and snugged up yeah about two hours man these, but these things right here these half inch sparkers oh my goodness that's the business yeah yeah those are nice right. yeah um checks too that's what i you checks. know I always recommend like uh i don't even like chroming the checks i don't no, like chroming either. the checks i don't like chroming the slowdowns nope. because you're gonna get leaks because right. they're going to mess with the threads and you're going to get leaks. Right. Whereas you go just to whatever comes in the box, you're not going to, this thing ain't going to leak. Yeah. I guarantee that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only thing that I would do is I put some ADEX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're coming. They're yeah. coming. Yeah. And I, you know, I, you know, ADEL, whatever, I'd put ADEX. Yeah. So, so that's going to be the future of this one. Yeah. So we're going to change the end cap on it. And then we're gonna add a couple ADEX later down the line. So I have an ADEX right now to the front and I had to buy the ADEX and the pump at the same time. So that kind of put a dent in my wallet. So- oh, come on now. Oh, oh, oh. Rich man talk. So, so <laughs> I got a birthday coming up and I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm gonna fund myself some, uh, a couple dumps here, some ADEX for the back. So this is where we're at. We're gonna flare these, crank these down and then we'll bring y'all back. Today's Saturday, March uh, 21st, and today's project is to get these batteries painted. So we're gonna scuff them up, wash them, get all the gooey stuff off of this where the stickers were, and then uh, add adhesive promoter and uh, base and clear. So we're gonna get these things shiny red. So here we go.
So that's a wrap for today's project. We've got these batteries, glossy red. Um, as far as prep, we just, uh, I got the gunk off of the sticker area with the uh, wax and grease. It came off really easy. Um, scuffed them down with the red pad. Washed them uh, soap and water. Mr. Eli over here. Blowing blow dry with the air. Um, that was it as far as prep. And then uh, we did epoxy. And then base and clear, eight ounces of base and uh, I'm sorry, 16 ounces of base and 16 ounces of clear. So just one, one coat of red and one heavy coat of clear. So that, that did it. So uh, that, that's a wrap for today. You got anything, Mr. Kenneth? No, nope. we want to go with shiny red and that's what they are. Yeah. There we go. Sure. Perks. Yes, sir. So what's today? The 20th? No. 21, I think. 20 Saturday, yeah. March 21st. So hopefully tomorrow, if the weather clears up, it's just pouring outside that we'll go ahead and uh, transport the rocket over here and it should be dry by then. And we'll go ahead and slap these, slap these in the trunk. Wait, wait, man. Get it closer.